Hello everyone, my name is Lucas Ferreira, I'm from the Pontifical Catholic University of Rio de Janeiro, and I'll present my work entitled Effect of Dimensional Parameters on the Mechanical Behavior of Curved Beam by Stable Mechanisms. My advisor, José Roberto Moraes Almeida, also participated in this work. This is the summary of the presentation. First, uh, I'll do an introduction on compliant mechanisms, by stable mechanisms, and the objectives of this work. Then I'll talk about the analysis part, where I'll show the analytical and numerical methods that I use to simulate the mechanism. And then I'll show the results of the variation of the mechanism's parameters that we obtained. And finally, the conclusions and references. Compliant mechanisms generate motion by the deflection of flexible members. On the other hand, traditional mechanisms are composed of rigid parts that are co connected by pins and joints to generate motion. Here on the left, there is a picture of the difference between these mechanisms, where on the top the traditional mechanism has several pins and joints, and it's composed of at least 10 parts, and on the bottom the compliant mechanism is a single 3D printed structure, and they dev develop the same task. Here on the right, there is another printed uh, compliant mechanism that rotates, and some advantages of them are no need to lubrication, fewer parts, cheaper, less stocking, and easier manufacturing. And the disadvantages are related to project complexity, fatigue, and limited movement. Bistable mechanisms are a type of compliant mechanism that have two stable positions. And on these two images here, there is an example of one developed by Correa in the University of Texas. It is composed of curved beams here. And when they are compressed, they go to a different stable position as shown in this image here. The first image uh, shows the process that the beams are submitted, a force is applied, and then they snap through to the second stable position. The objective of this work is to better understand how the variation of the mechanism parameters affects the force displacement behavior and what parameters affect the bistability condition of the mechanism. Not much work has been found in the literature concerning the in-depth study of these parameters so this is the motivation of this work. Here, uh, it's the mechanism used in this work, and it's a simpler version of the complete mechanism shown here. It was reduced to decrease processing time and to make the modeling easier. Uh, two curved beams are connected by their center, and this is important because in that way the mechanism can be bistable. If only one curved beam was present, it would not be possible. But I'll, I'll explain that better on the following slides. The mechanisms can be monostable or bistable, depending on the parameters. And the parameters that I'll talk about here are the side length, here, thickness of the curved beam, beam span, uh, which is the length here, and the apex height. The analytical formulation of a curved beam bistable mechanism, mechanism was developed by Q et al. And they found out that if a single curved beam is used, then it could not be bistable. This is better explained by these curves and these equations. I'll not have enough time to discuss it in depth, but what is important is that for a double curved beam, the force displacement relationship follows the F1 and F3 relationships shown here, and they are related to the first and third modes of buckling. If it was a single beam, it will follow the first, the F1 and F2 but F2 would prevent its bistability. The chained beam constraint model, or CBCM, is a numerical method that can be used to model curved beams. In sum, it breaks the beam into several pieces, and based on the values of the displacements, it returns the forces and moments. So you can generate a force displacement relationship, and in this work we use CBCM to model the mechanisms with and without the side length. The finite element analysis uh, was performed in Abacus with a mesh size of 0.5 mm, fixed supports at the ends, roller supports on the bottom surface and on the center to prevent rotation of that part, and the displacement boundary condition at the top of two times the apex height here, which is the maximum displacement allowed by the mechanism. And the static rigs analysis was chosen to model the simulation once it deals better with these types of buckling behavior. 
As only simulated experiments were conducted, we used the data of properties of a high-density polyethylene that was provided by Pereira Tal, Pereira 2019, who is a doctoral student of our uh, research group. Uh, the Young's modulus was 947 megapascal, density of 950 kilograms per cubic meter, and Poisson's ratio of 0 0.39. So the first parameter we studied was the side length here, once it's rarely discussed in the literature. So to sum up, when the side length gets better, the force threshold gets smaller and the force of the valley gets bigger. As we can see here in the first image, the mechanism with side length of 5 and 20 millimeters have force in the valley higher and the maximum force is getting lower. And the second point is that uh, a bistable mechanism can become monostable depends on the value of the side length. As we can see here, the mechanism with no side length was bistable once it reached a level of negative force. And when it increase the side length, it's getting close to a zero force value, becoming marginally bistable. And an interesting result is that the absorbed energy of the mechanisms with side length is similar and only the forces changes. The decrease of force threshold is compensated by the increase of the force valley of the valley. Uh, so now talking about the beam spin, the effect of the side length is more noticeable in mechanisms with higher lambda over L ratio. As we can see here, after the value of 0.10 of the ratio, the force threshold of the mechanism begins to diverge from the expected numerical result of the CBCM. And this distance is more evident in mechanisms with lower beam span, as we can see here. And for higher values of the beam span, the force threshold gets smaller and less energy is absorbed, as we can see here. And finally, the last analyzed parameter is the apex height. The value Q is the ratio between the apex height and the thickness of the beam and is related to the bistability condition. The criti critical value of Q also depends on the beam span. And here it's a figure showing the analysis of 108 mechanisms with three values of side length, 0 mm, 5 mm and 20 mm. And the mechanisms had varied apex heights and, and the thickness of the beam was fixed at 1 mm. Here, a good number of uh, mechanisms were bistable, as we can see by the colored squares. And the left column here is the normalized energy absorbed, and the right one is the normalized energy cost, which is the energy that the mechanisms must spend to leave the bistability position. And when we compare with these, these other two values of side length, we can better understand the effect of the side length. Only these mechanisms are bistable with 20 millimeters. We can see a difference from this image to this image. And with no side length, the critical value of Q is 2.5 here. And with two, uh, 20 millimeters, the, the value is 2.8. Finally, we concluded that the side length affects directly the bistability potential of a mechanism. High values of beam span reduce the energy absorbed of the mechanism. The apex height of the thickness have an important role on bistability, which is represented by the ratio Q, once the critical Q value changes uh, with the beam span, span. So you need to adapt based on these parameters re relationship. And then the most important statement is that the side length must be taken into consideration in the mechanism design once it's massively important and affects the force displacement relationship of the mechanism. Uh, here, the, uh, these are the references I used in the presentation. And so this is it. Uh, thank you all for the attention and here's my email for contact. I hope you all understand it. Thank you.